Thank you so much. That kind of got me a little bit. <laughs> well, first and foremost, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for your generosity, and thank you for taking the time and being here and opening up your pockets and your faces with your smiles and wanting to be here. It's been such a wonderful moment for me to actually sit down here with all of you and feel the room and feel the love that exists in this room. I want to congratulate Carol on an incredible, incredible evening and thank you so much for your leadership and 13 years of service to UNICEF. I would also... Absolutely, we should go. I would also like to celebrate the Steenbergen family, of course, on their much-deserved award. And as you know, Carol mentioned the Crocs' recent contribution to the children in Belize, so I would like to echo her appreciation to their generous support. Thank you so much, Crocs team. And an extremely, extremely special thank you to Diane von Fossenberg. Thank you, DVF, for taking the time and the effort to present this award to me. Coming from a woman who has a long, very, very long, distinguished list of accomplishments, it means the world to me. Diane has this incredibly amazing ability to make everyone that she meets feel completely empowered. So thank you for doing that for me today all over again. Thank you so much. Standing here today to receive the Danny K. Humanitarian Award as I complete 13 years of work with UNICEF, I feel a special kinship with Mr. K. And I'm extremely humbled to receive this recognition. I feel that it's my honor to work towards carrying his legacy forward every single day. Growing up in India as a child, my parents, who were doctors in the Indian Army, always iterated the importance of giving back and taught me that whatever we had was to be considered a privilege. My mother, Dr. Madhu Chopra, who's here. Uh -huh. She always taught me to use my privilege for the service of others. Otherwise, what's the point, she said. You were right. Thanks, Mom. Great advice from a great woman. In 2006, on my first field visit with UNICEF in Mumbai, I met Salma. Salma was 13 at the time, and at 13 years of age, she was advocating against early child marriage in her community, which was a slum. She would go door to door within her slum in an attempt to teach parents why and how to give their daughters a chance at a future. The reason she had the ability and the confidence to do that is because of what she learned by walking into a UNICEF community center where she was taught about her rights, not just as a child, but as a female. This community center became a place where so many young girls gathered to share their stories in support of one another, where they realized that they were not alone. This is what UNICEF does, ladies and gentlemen, for kids all over the world. I have seen this firsthand, the magnitude of the difference that they make every single day that I work with them is one of the greatest privileges of my life. I am in absolute awe of the tireless effort and unwavering commitment of the people who work for UNICEF, some of whom I've had the, the best and the good fortune of working for a very, very long time. I'd like to give a shout out to a couple of them. Gitanjali Master from UNICEF India, who I started this journey with. I don't, she's in India somewhere, but I just want to tell her I love her. Marissa Bucknoff, who's right here. <laughs> who I have worked closely with over the last few years. Victor Chinyama, who I have to give a call out to, first in Zimbabwe and now in Ethiopia. These are just some of the examples of the incredible teams that jump immediately into a situation and find solutions to assist wherever there's a child in need. 
The people of this organization do this every single day around the world and it truly reflects the United Nations credo of no borders. My UNICEF family, you are my true heroes. Working with you has taught me that it doesn't just take intention, ladies and gentlemen, it takes action. So I'd like to say thank you to UNICEF one more time for giving me the opportunity of learning that from you and doing that with you. I would also like to thank my team, a lot of them who are here, for their constant support and encouragement. Natasha Pal, who started this journey for me, she's flown all the way from India after a knee surgery, so she's hobbling around a little bit, but she's here. Um, Dana Sapnik, for being my companion on these trips and my sounding board, the rest of my team, Sonia, Ange, everyone who actually has always encouraged my philanthropic desires. Um, over the years, I have grown along with UNICEF, meeting children and their families from Ethiopia, Jordan, Zimbabwe, Bangladesh, India. I've had a chance to meet many, many incredible children, like Simon, Hubahiro, Dagmawit, Seba, Sunita, among many, many others, all of whom who have shared their stories with me. I not only admire their resilience and bravery, but I want to give you an example of some of the stories that these kids have shared with me. For example, Seba. Then she was 16 years old, a Syrian refugee, living in a makeshift tint and tarp home in a camp in Jordan. Back in Syria, they had a full life a big home, everything they could ask for, and one day, while sitting on the dining table having dinner, they heard bombings in the neighborhood. Now, they were so used to shelling that her mother, Isdihar, she grabbed her handbag and her children and ran out thinking that they'll be back in a few hours, maybe a few days. Seven years later, with just that handbag sitting next to her, as I sat in that sparse living room, all I heard was a resolve to return to their home and rebuild a life. Not malice, not pain, a resolve. A lot of the work that I've done with UNICEF has been focused on displaced children around the world who have faced violence, gender inequalities, and those who don't have access to a quality education. These kids have big dreams. Some aspire to be doctors, engineers, teachers, lawyers. The list goes on, but for me, Moments like these are so telling of the hope that these children have, just like children all over the world. If these kids don't get an access to quality education, we're talking about an entire generation of children that'll be lost. This is where UNICEF comes in. They help these children have a better future. Today, we live in an increasingly complex world all of us gathered here in this room are united by that one desire to simplify and improve this world for the children who inhabit it. Philanthropy today has gone beyond just funding projects. Be disruptive, show compassion and care, be catalytic in our actions and our solutions. Giving back is no longer a choice. Giving back has to be a way of life. The children of the world are relying on us to not only support them, but ignite a movement of giving that becomes far greater than anything that we've seen. Let us live up to our children's dreams and the generations of children to come. And let's hope that we don't fail them yet again. I'd like to borrow words from poet and Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore to encapsulate what I'm really feeling because obviously he can do it much better than me. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert 
of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action, into that heaven of freedom, my Father, let my world awake. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you so much for encouraging me. And I once again pledge to continue to do everything I can for every child in the world because as UNICEF taught me, every child matters. Thank you so much.